Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Today we're going to talk about uh, the ghost population found in the genome of West African populations, which by the way should be uh, front page news on archaeology.org and all these other um, science news outlets because for a long time the out of Africa theory and all of these other th theories regarding the uniquely old uh, homo sapiens populations in Africa were built on the fact that they did not have any uh, Neanderthal or other genomes mixed in with theirs uh, because for a long time uh, they thought the sub-Saharan Africans were I guess they were the most quote pure homo sapiens out there in terms of not having Denisovan, Neanderthal or any other hominin uh, DNA compared to other uh, races. Anyway, uh, before we actually get into this, I wanted to uh, answer a few questions. First of all, if you guys are uh, coming from the Grimerica uh, podcast, the appearance I did last week, uh, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for subscribing and following me. Hopefully I, uh, all my videos from here on out will be rewarding and useful to you and challenging. And the other thing is I've gotten a lot of questions about how to donate uh, and, and to support the channel because uh, during that podcast, I mentioned that I didn't have any any Patreon or anything like that. The only way that you can support this channel is through my BitChute channel. So if you go here, so this is the latest uh, upload that I did on BitChute. If you just scroll down, you can see this dollar sign here, tip or pledge. You click that and then you can donate to me via coin payments or PayPal. And that's how you do it through BitChute. So um, there is really no other way to, to uh, support this channel. This channel is completely self-funded. Although I have gotten a couple of recent donations through BitChute. So thank you very much. You guys know who you are. I, I don't think you guys want your name released. So, But I really do appreciate all the support that I get. Just because all that money goes back into the program, I, you know, microphones or cords or um, software, anything like that, that can help the, the production quality of the show. But yeah, anyway, uh, so that's how you do it. And I hope that answers any questions. If you guys have any suggestions about this, just let me know on Twitter, uh, in the comments below, or in the comments in BitChute or in whatnot. Uh, second thing I wanted to talk about before we get into this is uh, the iTunes. So I don't have... I've mentioned many times I'm going to uh, convert this to a podcast and up and still use uh, the YouTube channel concurrently with the podcast. And I just um, haven't uh, gotten around to uh, uh, getting the uh, necessary the hosting, the web hosting, like the Libsyn hosting and all that stuff. Just because um, I still I'm still hashing out the format of the podcast. As you may know, this channel is based on a lot of uh, visuals, and I feel like that the podcast is. Um, would be only only audio only. So I would like to tailor the show to the audio or only format. So maybe moving inter interviews would I would like to be done on both YouTube and um, iTunes and, and iTunes podcasts. But that's still a work in progress. And I've gotten a lot of questions about that too. A lot of people like to listen to me at work. One alternative you can do is download YouTube Red. I think that's what it's called, where you could minimize and and turn off your or turn off the display of your phone while still listening to uh, whatever YouTube channel is going on. Of course, that costs. I think that costs a monthly fee. So um, if you're not into that, I mean that's fine too. But um, yeah, the, the iTunes thing is still a work in progress. So um, I will be updating everybody on that, and I'm sorry to disappoint anybody. Otherwise. Okay, so back to the article. Scientists find uh, evidence of ghost population of ancient humans. Traces of unknown ancestor emerge when research analyzed genomes from West African populations. So here's a map of a pretty crude map of West Africa, and it's it's pretty accurate though. So they've taken samples, four samples, two from Nigeria, uh, one from Gambia, and then I think the other one is from Sierra Leone. If I'm not mistaken, I, I, it's in the article. But I'll, I'll get to it anyway. So th this is the sample size here. The, what they found out was there is this ghost population that makes up a large, a surprisingly large part of their genome. If you guys have followed my channel, we I've covered something similar in the Philippines and, and that area, Indonesia, where they found homo uh, er, early version of Homo erectus as well as 
um, Denny Sovin uh, genes and ob- obviously the Hobbit people. There are two archaic unknown, I guess, ghost genes that they found amongst the people there who they don't know belongs. So this is a very similar thing. So I've, I've often speculated that there are probably many of these ghost populations or ghost genes that have come and gone and have left their imprint in our uh, modern genome, people who live on today, essentially. So this one, this ghost population lived about 500,000 years ago. So again, we have that number. We're going back further. Just to give you guys a reference, if that number doesn't mean anything to you, around 350,000 years ago to 550,000 years ago is when uh, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals supposedly branched off, depending on who you ask. So again, th- we, that uh, time frame again is, is re-emerging here. So j- if you just look at the map again, you could, you guys can't see, but up here, um, if you go further north, you will get to the Strait of Gibraltar right into uh, Spain, modern day Spain, Portugal. The 315,000 years ago, they found the oldest uh, Homo, sapi- Homo sapiens uh, remains of the Jebel Erhud man. And that might be, they were speculating with that, that he probably was coming and going, his, that his tribe or whatever the people that he came belonged to. Between um, the, the Straits of Gibraltar, Europe, and, and Africa. So it's not unheard of even back then. 315,000 years is a long time ago for people to be coming and going. And I don't think that was a novel thing back then. So that's just a, a nice little hint that I noticed. Uh, traces of the unknown ancestor emerge when researchers analyzed genomes from West African populations and found that up to a fifth of their DNA appeared to have come from the missing relatives. So that's a huge chunk to have gone unnoticed for a long time. And I, uh, many people often wonder, Africa, it, it seems to be the cradle of civilization. It seems to be so critical to the history of, of uh, humanity. How come it's so understudied? It's criminally understudied. And this is, this is a huge overlooking of the genome, a fifth of their DNA. So it's between... I think two to nineteen percent of their of their DNA make makes up these uh, is made up of. Uh, I mean, two to nineteen percent of this ghost population DNA is found in these modern West Africans. Why is that such a huge uh, chunk, and how has it gone unnoticed? Anyway, uh, so these geneticists uh, they suspect that the ancestors of modern West Africans interbred with the yet to be discovered archaic humans tens of thousands of years ago. So. When ancient Europeans and uh, Neanderthals were mating, this was going on a lot more recently than these archaic humans and these West Africans. So what, wh- again, what was going on? What was the snapshot of, of human migration back then? Who knew what? Which, what were they referring to each other as? I mentioned, if you guys came from the Crimerica podcast, I mentioned the Romans having a word for, for the uh, Germans. Uh, again, which deriving from a seed, uh, Germania, right? Um, like a, a wheat germ or some type of uh, uh, proliferating organism. That's basically what they were referring to them as. And it's a very inhuman way of referring to another group of people. But again, back then, and even further than the Roman time, I mean, tens of thousands of years ago, they, they must have had a very similar stance on a foreign group of people, especially if they looked a lot different from you. So um, I, I wonder what all that was going on, what kind of, uh, uh, culturally speaking, I wonder what kind of impact uh, this had. In the West Africans, we looked at all have ancestry from this unknown archaic population, all of them. So without question, they definitely, at one point, this ghost population had a huge influence, a huge genetic influence on uh, West African today. Very interesting. Uh, the world was once home to many related species or subspecies of human um, and that number is growing up and up now. Uh, first, they just thought it was Neanderthals and then us and then Denny Sylvans came and then Flores came. And then uh, they found out Erectus was around uh, a lot uh, re- more recently than, than originally thought. So we might have had like a World of Warcraft type situation going on where there's a bunch of different races uh, roaming the earth and having uh, their own culture, their own uh, hunting grounds, all of these things. 
Um, even in Doggerland, uh, if you guys watch the Doggerland episode, there were signs of human activity as far as 800,000 years ago with Homo antecessor, and they had tools and all that stuff as well. So it was very, very uh, interesting, again, what what was going on back then, that people may not have been as rudimentary as we, as we thought they were um, almost a million years ago. Modern Europe- Europeans carry a smattering of Neanderthal genes, while indigenous Australians, Polynesians, and Melanesians carry genes from Denisovans. And and now Africans, West Africans, have their own version of Denisovans, or their own archaic human that we've yet to discover. And of course, I just mentioned this, previous studies have hinted other ancient humans once roamed Africa, but the problem was they didn't find any uh, actual fossil or DNA evidence. Um, they've only had peripheral ev- evidence of them existing. So, But it's been long speculated, and now it's just being confirmed. And who knows how long they've been sitting on this information. Uh, th- never underestimate the amount of time that uh, academia sits on information and waits for it to uh, waits to rele- release it because that also does happen as well. So they they take f- they obtain 405 genomes from four West African populations, and then they use these statistical techniques to work out whether an influx of genes from interbreeding was likely to have happened in the distant past, and. It had in every case, essentially. So 100%, there was an influx of genes from interbreeding between two different populations uh, a long time ago. So again, there, there you go. The scientists went on to scour the African genomes for chunks of DNA that look different to modern human genes. So they pulled out sequences that most probably came from an ancient relative. Uh, by ca- comparing these genes with genes from Neanderthals and Denisovans, they concluded that the DNA had come from an unknown group of archaic humans. That's how they knew, because the, the genes that looked different, they did not match up with Neanderthals and Denisovans. So there was no other one in the record, essentially, in the genetic uh, record with this uh, type of sequence. So it had to be um, an old, old humans. And again, they made a pretty substantial impact. Two to 19% of their genetic ancestry they make up. So they might have been conquerors. They might have been successful tradesmen. They might have come from some empire back in the day that 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 uh, uh, disappeared or was or wiped out at some point. Um, anyway, these four populations studied came from three countries. Two from Nigeria. Yeah, Sierra Leone and Gambia. Already. Yeah, I was right. 405... Uh, genomes may not sound like a lot, but that is a very substantial amount when you're talking about an understudied region like West Africa. That this is a huge leap forward in in the in getting closer to what was going on in Africa at the time. Uh, just as an aside, if you talk about Genghis Khan and the Mongols, that only happened within a span of what a, less than a century, like 80 years from start to finish. Um, and they, Genghis Khan alone spread his genes all over a, uh, the, the earth, the known earth at the time. And geneticists now in the future, when they look back, they're going to see his, his genetic imprint on the, on the modern people in the, of the future. The future people, future modern people. <laughs> um, and they'll wonder what was going on with him once all his records are gone. Um, it could be someone like that. Um, we're not very, sh- we're not sure, but again, two to 19% is a substantial amount of, of genome to take, to make up. Uh, the ghost population split from ancestors of Neanderthals and modern humans between 360,000 and 1 million years ago. Um, the group of perhaps 20,000 individuals then bred with the ancestors of modern West Africans at some point in the past 124,000 years. So even older than when Neanderthals allegedly, um, uh, intermingled with us, uh, depending on who you ask, it's within 100,000 years ago, but this is a, at least 124,000 years ago. So this is pre-Mount uh, Mount Toba, Lake Toba eruption. This is pre-Younger Dryas, obviously. Um, so again, uh, I think this is even pre-Ice Age. I don't think our Ice Age, our Ice Age, the Ice Age that we just got out of um, the, the upper Paleo- Paleolithic and, and such. This I think that might have started around this time, uh, maybe a little bit after 124,000 years ago. But yeah, this is a very interesting, um, a very interesting uh, fact that I think if you take anything away from this article, you should take away that because 124,000 years ago, he, Homo sapiens were in a position to be intermingling with these people. 
what kind of position were we in? Were we in, were we still kind of uh, in our infancy, so to speak, in our, of our development? Were we just roaming around aimlessly in these, in these tribes? Um, or did we have like rudimentary cities or what was going on back then? Did we get taken over? Did, did we, did we welcome these people with open arms? There's still so much to, to ask and there's still so much uh, to find out uh, who, the, who the, were these people mentioned in scripture or in other cultures are if you're uh into um, extraterrestri extraterrestrials were they that i don't think they were that because um there's no real evidence of that but it could be though i i wouldn't rule that out um there may have been multiple waves of mating over many thousands of years or a number of different populations of so far unknown archaic human relatives uh, one possibility is that west africans retain the dna because it helped them to survive and breed and um, yeah, I, I suppose um, most, just like the people who got raped by Genghis Khan, they still survived and their offspring still bred. Um, I don't think that's necessarily why the DNA stayed there, though. It could, it, it just could, it could just be they had viable offspring and then that's it. They just went about their lives afterwards. I don't think um, they got like some super upgrade, but who knows? Maybe they did like the, like the altitude gene or something, or maybe it made us more um, well-versed in, in the arts or something, or maybe we, we're better at thinking about concepts uh, in, in an abstract manner. Who knows? Uh, these are all, uh, these are just all stuff off the top of my head, all possibilities, or it could just be, they just got physically, they just adapt, adopted those physical um, properties uh, from this ghost population. Um, so we do not know what this African, uh, African population may have been. It is tempting to speculate. I've got to say it's just too soon to know. So there's more work to be done. And I hope the silver lining from this is other than the, uh, finding out about a whole new, uh, branch of archaic human is to send more resources and people to investigate this. Because again, like I mentioned earlier, it's criminally under, under, uh, investigated there needs to be more work done and africa is a huge huge continent and there's so much uh ground to cover um there's so much to excavate there's it's just uh got to be a huge critical piece to human history especially ancient history going back even a million plus years and we would um it would be we have every single sign every single green light to carry this forward. So uh, anyway, if you have any uh, comments or questions, let me know. Um, if you want, if there's anything you'd like to add to this, uh, let me know for sure. Uh, oh, one more thing. Um, I, let me give you Bruce Fenton's um, uh, thoughts on this. So these are some of his tweets. Um, in the middle of this range of the period in which all large brain hominin lineages began to diverge 700, 800,000 years ago. So again, I mentioned that in Grimerica as well. A lot of stuff is going on here. So maybe they did get an upgrade at this time. Large-brained hominin lineages. Um, another thing he says, this is interesting as it further adds to the picture of many lines of genetically novel hominin appearing at approximately one time. They would likely all carry chromosome 2, which is uh, the chromosome that allows us to interbreed and have viable offspring. Um, so again, maybe they were just one of many of this kind of Cambrian explosion of humans, large brain humans, uh, and they started the roam of the earth. That's another uh, possibility. Uh, there is no evidence either population of human ancestors in the study lived in Africa when the interbreeding happened. So this is a huge assumption, not based on any solid evidence. Humans have always been highly mobile and we have to be very wary of these statements. Yeah, they could very well have been not, not from Africa. Like I said earlier, the, the Jebel Urhud man, the, homo, the oldest homo sapiens we found, he was found pretty much on the border of, of Northern Africa and Europe, near the Straits of Gibraltar in Morocco. So maybe this population just came in from either Europe or maybe uh, maybe from the East. Uh, that That is not known. The jury's still out on that. So um, these, again, this might not be an African population, a native African op uh, population. Um, so again, 124,000 years ago, uh, the time highlighted is considered to be when humans were exiting Africa, but this novel interbreeding events fits better with people entering. So yeah, around 125, 124,000 years ago, people started uh, leaving Africa. Um, I think that was a failed attempt first, but then 
um, that's that everyone, a lot of people have had uh, mixed opinions on that. Um, maybe it wasn't a failed attempt. Maybe they were just coming in uh, from somewhere else. Uh, and then he goes on to say, we, if we have an isolated population encountered, it's very likely this is a meeting of Eurasian migrants entering Africa. Very interesting. Um, this is something I argue for my Forgotten Exodus book based on genetic, climatic, and cultural evidence. Um, yeah, so this could be an isolated population. Um, again, just with very little influence among other, other uh, uh, hu uh, modern humans. Um, if we go back to the map, again, um, this is just, even though West Africa is huge, it's still um, just a, p a portion of of Africa, the continent. So, um, yeah, it, it could be a, an isolated population, isolated event, and then something happened and then they're wiped out. Kind of like an isochron, if you guys know what that is. An isochron is just, uh, just a singular event in time, like a one-off. It could be that. But there's still so much uh, to find out. But, yeah, uh, Bruce just cautions against um, making these assumptions. All right. Well, anyway, uh, again, let me know what you guys think about this. Um, if you have anything to add and I'll talk to you guys later.